You've experienced the fun of Overdress with the first booster release, and look where that brought you. Right back to me, baby. Hello again, it's another week. It feels like literally 24 hours passes between Tuesdays at this point. I don't know why every week feels like it's going much faster than before. Like, I know normally time feels like it passes quickly, but these days it actually, like, I don't know, this year in particular, I was like, wasn't it Christmas just like a couple weeks ago and it's almost May now? Yeah, things are pretty freaky. Anyway, as always, Bushroot has blessed us with more news this week. Of course, there isn't as much to talk about this time around because last week they didn't really announce any more new cards because the booster set was coming out we do have like four new cards to look at for actual like festival collection reveals and then we got a few token rambo things and quite a lot of monster strike like art to look at but of course i think this week's stream was definitely a lot more focused on zero because in zero they finally announced how legion works with the next month's update so while this is sort of an overdress news video at the same time it's going to be a lot of zero so you know if you don't play zero just stay tight. Also, 35% thingy, you know, YouTube is a nasty place that makes us content creators do all kinds of things like mention percentages and ask you to support us because otherwise, you know, we struggle to get by, especially when we make videos about expensive hobbies. So I definitely do appreciate the help. And also, if you want to pick up any overdressed products, head on over to parkage.com, use discount code different5 for 5% discount at checkout. I would definitely start pre-ordering my stuff if I was you. I generally like the fact that there's like less than like it's exactly a month now, basically left until Overdress comes out in English, it's pretty scary to think how fast last month passed. Like, we were at the end of March just now, and we're already at the end of April, so yeah. Anyway, I think we're gonna actually prioritize the Zero stuff for the start of this video, and then talk about the Overdress news towards the latter half. So of course, Legion Mate is coming to Zero in May. They announced this way back in December, so we've known about it for quite a while, but of course today we got the actual details. The only thing that I wish we had, which I think is like really desperately lacking, is the actual like schedule of updates. If you remember when the Link Joker season came out they actually gave us like the entire schedule of updates for link joker where they said that link joker season will last for nine months and that was great because i could make a video saying i expect this and this set to come out of this and this time now we don't have that which is a little bit disappointing but then we do have like a bush road like strategy presentation in mid-may so maybe that's when we'll get it we'll find out soon i guess so i'm probably gonna hold off until that presentation comes out to actually make that kind of video of my expectations for releases for legion but so they showed us what they first set for legion will be which is the following so ryuken soto is how it's pronounced in in japanese i think which is like legion of blades and and dra like knights and dragons of, or something like that so basically you can see here they have the you know protagonist team plus some rares and promos i saw some japanese players tweeting like oh wow i can't believe they're turning promos and rares into triple rares in zero like you know good job but of course, maybe they'll buff them a lot to make them triple rare worthy, we'll find out. But of course, they did change up the first booster set for Legion quite a bit. You know, this used to have like Neo Nectar and Spikes as well as DP in it. And so they pushed those, I guess, I mean, some of those are clan events, but I guess they pushed DP to later on and instead put in Yggdrasil, which is its own extra booster back in the TCG. So of course we have Kai using Think Saber Dragon with Royal Paladin. We have Brawlers that are Narukami, which is used by Naoki. Then Risers that are Nova Grappler used by Kamui. And then of course, CEO Yggdrasil is a regalia which is you know genesis used by misaki also in the previous visual that you saw which is like the legion mate announcement one those are actually the fight skins which will be coming out in you know on may 1st as well so i definitely want to cop the misaki one that's actually probably my favorite outfit she's ever had and just in general like i think short hair misaki grown me a lot during that season so definitely do like that quite a lot so how does legion actually work so of course if you you didn't play the tcg back then or you just didn't play the tcg at all you know just a zero player then this will be your explanation so the legion ability is when your vanguard and a legion mate stand together on the vanguard circle so it's two units combined into one and they combine their base powers during the battle phase into one so you can see here there's a grade two and a grade three that are 10k power each that combine into 20k and so that power combination is only during the battle phase so like during your opponent's turn you go back down to like you know your 10k grade three vanguard or 11k grade three vanguard they stay in the legion state like together but you know the power just resets to the grade three's power during the opponent's turn and what's cool in zero is that their illustration like their art combines into one like you see here with the thing saver and the blaster blade seeker so that looks just super super nice and of course being in legion state unlocks all kinds of skills now how does the legion actually work so here it says that legion works that when you are going first you can do it from your fourth turn onwards and when you're going second you can do it from your third turn onwards and then 
if this unit has not legioned yet this game, so this the unit that you're sitting on right now, then you can choose four cards from your drop zone, put them back into your deck, and search your deck for the legion mate and legion with it. And so what's different about the TCG is that in the TCG, both players had to be at grade three. Instead, here they made it so that you basically cannot legion until your fourth turn if you're going first, or until your third turn if you're going second, and by then, you know, usually both players are at grade three. And so you can, of course, recycle triggers back to the deck and things like that. So if you check a lot of triggers early or discard Guard them with like Lian or Gojo, you can instantly just put them back into the deck on your turn four or turn three, which is really, really cool. And also the text that like talks about if you have a legion with this unit, I'm pretty sure only specifies that specific unit, you know, at the time, not that name. So like, for example, if you're sitting on Thinksaver and you legion and the next turn you want to just like ride over it again and legion again, you know, just to put back another four triggers when you drop some back to the deck, you can do that. It's just that, you know, in the future, there will be an ability that retires legion mates. And uh, it's because of that basically that that kind of like reminder text exists and they also showed us a few cards which of course are Kai's card so Kai is going to be the protagonist of this season and he is using Royal Paladin with Seekers so Seekers have a starter which is the Seeker file so his effect is of course Forerunner and when your Vanguard legions so the timing that it performs legion you put him into the soul and then search your deck for Blaster Blade Seeker and call it to Rearguard Circle and he has on Rearguard Circle Resist so Resist is actually being introduced into Vanguard Zero Resist simply means that this unit cannot be chosen by the opponent's abilities. So this also says that the cannot be chosen includes when it's like randomly retired by effects like Gala Buster. However, if an effect says to like choose all of the opponent's rear guards, then it does bypass it. So just like in the TCG, basically, because we don't have like random choice effects in the TCG. So it's pretty nice. It's just a starter that, you know, provides a soul charge by going back into the soul and calls out a grade two, which is intercept. And what does Blaster Blade Seeker do? Well, he says rear guard circle when placed, if your Vanguard is a seeker then you can count us two and choose an opponent's regard and retire it so this actually i think used to be count us one in the tcg so they made it a little bit more expensive which i guess i mean it's an intercept pop so i guess it's okay but i can't i think they did have a counter charger in seekers but i can't remember if it was early or if it was later on so i'm not sure if it'll be in this set or not but of course it does very blaster blade things but it is a triple rare which is you know we went from double rare blaster blades to triple rare and now triple rare again, which is a little bit yikes, but I guess it's okay. And then of course, Think Saber Dragon, probably one of the most iconic Legion units entirely of the entire season, is of course the main Legion for Royal Paladin. So he Legions with Blaster Blade Seeker, and so you just put them together. So the 9K from Blaster Blade Seeker and the 11K from Think Saber combine into 20K. And then he says, when he attacks the Vanguard at the end of that battle, if you are in Legion state, you may Soul Blast three, Kanamas two, and discard two to search your deck for a Think Saver Dragon and ride it as stand and then Legion with the Blaster Blade Seeker from your soul and draw two. So this is cool because it basically says that you get a multiple attack. Like you basically Persona Ride from your soul and you pull out that Blaster Blade Seeker and re-Legion with it so you can attack with it again. Back in the TCG, we had this thing where you could do like double Think Saver. So you'd basically have like four Counter Blast, six Soul Blast, and then like discard four basically. But you basically attack with this, then like, you know, Counter Blast two, Soul Blast three, discard two, and then like re-ride and then just do that thing again right but we don't have Margol in zero which was a draw trigger they could put into the soul to give something else plus 3k so i'm not sure how we're gonna achieve the soul requirement for think saver to do that two times but it's still a pretty good i mean it's just a restander i think a lot of people are just asking like isn't gonna be a little bit too like difficult or like too expensive to do this but other than that is a really strong card he also has the effect on vanguard circle when he attacks the vanguard gains plus 2k so he's 13k attacker regardless so he can attack cross rides if you're not in legion state which is definitely quite nice and they also showed the playmat for the vanguard zero championship spring so this is going to be happening quite soon actually i think at the like what next week or something no i think next week is the qualifier last qualifier tournament and then later on it's going to be i think in may they're actually going to do the actual championship. So first through third, get this very nice Think Saber and Blaster Blade Seeker playmat. Generally, the units that are on these like championship playmats always get turned into rank rewards. So I guess expect both of them to be a rank reward. Maybe even Think Saber could be the first rank reward is what I'm hoping for, you know, in May. But I, you know, I guess it's hard to predict for now. And then those of you that make it into the tournament get a free uh, Dragonic Overlord, the Rebirth Crit Great 3 promo. And of course, 
course, the people that place in the top four will actually receive one with those hot stamps that you see on the left side. So that's definitely quite cool as well. And that's basically it for the Zero News. So they basically announced Legion, they showed off Thing Saber, and they said that now every day when they reveal new cards for the TCG, they'll also be revealing some of the new cards in this booster set for Legion as well. I'm personally probably going to build Brawlers and Risers and then see about the others. Like my teammate used CEO Yggdrasil and it was a pretty cool deck, I guess. And Thing Saver was also used by my teammates. So like I have a lot of experience playing against those decks, but never really was too interested in them in the TCG. And I don't know, for me, Legion, even though it was like back in 2014, it feels still pretty recent to me. I don't know, in my memory at least, where I guess I don't have as much nostalgia attached to it. But I guess we'll see. Maybe when like Sinbuster and stuff get revealed, I'll feel a bit more nostalgia. But I guess for this set, there isn't as many of my like big favorites in it yet, but it's still pretty interesting. And I wonder what kind of buffs they'll give to cards like Tester Fox and things like that to make them be worthy of being a triple rare. All right, so now let's take a look at the overdress news that we got. There definitely isn't much compared to previous weeks, so we're going to probably steamroll through this pretty quickly. Dragon Empire cards for Festival Collection got revealed. They basically just shoot two of them each day, so I think we'll be done with them by Friday, which is cool, I guess. If you're preparing for Spring Fest, I would just kind of like just put a blindfold on and pretend these don't exist because you cannot play these during Spring Fest because they come out afterwards. But even then, they're cool cards that you'll definitely need in the future, maybe, potentially. So let's take a look at them. First things first, we have Rough Eating Dragon Hunger Zorus. So that's a pretty cool name. Uh, he's a great 2, 10k power, continuous rearguard circle. During your turn, this unit gets power plus 5,000. And if your opponent has a front row rearguard, this unit cannot attack the vanguard. <sighs> Hmm, a lot of people were looking at this set hoping that there would be like the one card that really helps Eugene like do something when it can't do anything else otherwise. Keep in mind that if you pass on an empty board, Eugene cannot use any skills whatsoever and is just basically vanilla. So a lot of people were hoping that there would be something that maybe like does something when the opponent has no field or like maybe forces the opponent to call something from the top of the deck or from the drop zone or whatever so they can like snipe it and pop Eugene. But nope, they got this, which just doesn't really feel that good it's like a 15k attacker sure but it has like that restriction which just doesn't really do much in the eugene deck to be honest if anything it's probably i don't know if it's better or worse than the one the other 15k attacker in the deck so yeah the other card which is basically the cover card of in the festival collection in general is flame priestess meeting so she's a 6k grade one which when i saw like 6k grade one i was like wow this must have an amazing effect like her power is as low as a pg like this must be good and her skill is regard circle when your unit with over Overdress attacks, you can put her into your soul to choose one of your units with Overdress, and it gets power plus 5k until end of turn. Like, this... I don't know, it, does this really need to be 6k power? Like, this ability isn't so crazy that this, like, didn't, like, why, why is it not 8k, right? I don't know, this felt like a pretty weird card. Like, it's good that it provides soul because, you know, you can only, like, use Varina's effect once per game at this point because you lack the soul charge in that deck, so... At least it provides that, so it's kind of nice in that sense. And giving 5k extra is good because like you are a very aggressive deck that wants to just like finish games quickly and just like push, 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 push. Giving that extra 5k to Verina Valiente means that if you do hit and get the restand, it's gonna carry over because that power stays for the whole turn. But I think that's basically all the strength of this card has because it's basically just like extra soul and a bit of extra power for more pressure and being able to finish games, right? I guess in that sense, it does fit into the deck quite nicely and there are some grade one spaces like in the deck in general and like there are things that you can cut for it like you know like the ten chest that i guess but that's about it then for dark states they got two cards as well they got degraded age dragon which is a grade one with 8k power when placed on rearguard circle if you have five or more cards in your soul you can discard one and retire one of your opponent's back row rearguards this is uh, like I don't know. This card doesn't really feel like it slots into either Bruce or Barrow Magnus right now, especially not Barrow Magnus, because you're minusing yourself to put your board into your soul, and you put your opponent's board into their soul as well, so it's like you're already retiring their rear guards. So it's kind of like, is this just meant to be like early retire, but you don't usually need that early retire anyway. And discard one is just like, mm, doesn't feel that good. This might be a good card for like a future deck in Dark State, so it might still be worth picking up like this. Maybe there's going to be some other deck that just has a massive ass hand or like a lot of like when discarded effects, you know, like your Chronicle did in, in AV Premium. So I guess we'll see. But for now, that one definitely felt also a bit strange. But Diablo's Boy's Jared, though, does feel pretty good. It's a great two. And of course, it is basically final rush support, right? Cannabis one, Soul Boss one on Rear Circle once per turn. 
turn to choose a unit with Diablos in its name and give it plus 10k power until end of turn. That effect is already really nice. And then he says, during the battle this unit attacks, if you're in final rush, your opponent cannot intercept. So that like cannot intercept ability is like, it's okay. It's nothing super crazy, like nothing to write home about. It's that first ability for me, right? Because you can give your Bruce the extra 10k because it's often the smallest attack. So you kind of pump that up. But more than anything, you can give your Eden plus 10k. And so Eden is a 15k attacker that when he restands get, gets an extra crit. So you make that into 25 or 35 when you actually do your persona ride that then restands thanks to Bruce and has so much extra pressure. This is also nice because you can just like call him down in the back row and then just basically like use that skill and then use Marjorie to put him into the soul to just like, you know, just put him into the soul off the field, get your extra draw, extra soul charge, whatever. And you just have a lot of pressure like this plus Eden is really good I can see making like two spaces or three spaces or so for this card I think it's actually pretty nice like this probably out of the four revealed so far for festival collection by far the best card I think and I think probably tomorrow we'll get the two Keter Sanctuary ones and then on Thursday the two Stoikea ones and then on Friday we'll get the two Brankate cards so Probably everything from this set will be revealed by Friday, I expect. I don't think they're gonna like start skipping around and like showing token Rambu stuff before that. So yeah. Then we got a couple of V Premium promos as well. So these are well for both V Premium and Premium. So we have an Aquaforce card who is the Brave Shooter. This card is pretty cool. He says at the end of the battle, you attack the Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. If it's the first battle of that turn, you can count on one and put him on the bottom of your deck. So go to the top three cards of your deck and call it to that same Rearguard Circle that he was um that he was put on the bottom of the deck from. So that's actually not a bad card. I think that card is pretty decent just because it instantly makes multi attacks. So whether that's like in Valios like on an axle circle that's 14 so that's pretty okay or in other decks i think that's actually a pretty okay card so hopefully this is pretty easy to get in english as well and then for mega colony we have the stamping red that's i think what this card is called and it's gridora support so this card says when placed on vanguard circle or regard circle you can catamus one to choose an opponent's regard without a cradle marker and put a cradle marker on it and then if you couldn't choose one then you draw one so basically you either like you know put that annoying marker on one of their units if they have something to put it on but if everything is already cradled just draw a card you know it's basically the same thing right except you draw instead of search and then during your turn if your opponent has a rear guard with a cradle marker it gets plus 6k so it's basically like a strong beater for gridora as well so seeing like gridora support in this is actually pretty tight like I'm, i didn't expect that and now this is where we get to the collab part so they announced some of the collab stuff of course we already knew about the token rambo details but they actually showed some new cards which is the ride line from the trial deck so this this one is based around the Kashu Kiyomitsu. So the starter is just Kashu Kiyomitsu. He just says like, if you go second and you ride over this, you draw a card like any other starter. But then we have the Kashu Kiyomitsu Sento. So he's the grade one. He says when he's rode upon by Kashu Kiyomitsu Toku, so the grade two, you look at the top card of your deck and put it on top or into your soul. So basically you get to either like stack a trigger or something you might want to draw into. And if it's just a dead card you don't really want, just put into the soul. That's it. His second skill says Rigor Circle. He gets plus 2k during your turn. So he's a 10k booster. We've seen those kind of cards be used in other decks. So I could see him staying in the main deck as well outside of the right deck. The grade 2 Kashu Kiyomitsu Toku says when you ride over him with Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiyome, then you search your deck for up to one Yamato no Kami Yasusada and reveal it and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So uh, the Yamato no Kami is a grade 2 that we'll take a look at in a little bit. So you basically just like you ride the grade 3 over this. You instantly get a card into your hand, which is not bad. I mean, most of the ride lines do something akin to that, so that's pretty good. And then on Rear Circle, again, he gets plus 2k during your turn. So very easy the 12k attacker, so not that hot. So might not be played in the main deck, but we'll see. The Yamato no Kami Yasusada is a grade 2 as well with 10k power and says Rear Circle Kamas 1. For this turn, he gets plus 5k power. But if your Vanguard is Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiyome, so the grade 3, he gets power 10k instead of 5k. And that skill is not once per turn, so you can theoretically Kamas 5 for plus 50k so far this deck doesn't seem to have any like crazy gimmick or anything you know from the trial deck alone and it's meant to be there you know for like token rambo fans and stuff like that you know that's what collab sets are for but let's take a look at the grade three which is the kashu kiyomitsu kiwame so he has two skills first skill is during your turn if you don't have any face up cards in your damage zone he gets power plus 10k so basically when you have any spare Cannon boss face up, you can use the Yasusada to just like blow through it all and give him a bunch of power, which is pretty cool. And then his second skill is once per turn, Cannon boss one, Soul Boss one on Vanguard Circle. Look at the top card of your deck and put it on top or bottom of your deck and then draw a card. So if it's something good on top, you draw it. If it's something bad, you can put it on the, you know, on the bottom. 
The only sad part is that if it's a trigger, I guess you want to put it to the bottom because you don't want to draw into it. So that's something to consider. So far, this deck doesn't really impress me too much. It hasn't really shown too much, I guess, in terms of effects, but we'll see what it does. They did reveal, however, that the trial deck itself will have token Rambo rare. So I guess when you open the trial decks, you have a chance of maybe pulling one of these. So you can see here they have like going from left, top left to bottom right. They have a what seems, seems to be a grade three. Then there's the perfect guard. Then there's the grade one, then a grade two. Then an, the critical, the draw, the front, the heal. And then we have the actual ride line we just took a look at. And then the grade two we just saw. And then we have another grade three and grade one, I believe. Or grade two and grade one, sorry. So, of course, these look really beautiful with those like amazing backgrounds and like the kanji for even like the raid number and everything so these do look really cool and you know modi p did mention that these are meant to be like collectibles for token rambo fans as well not just vanguard players that like maybe the token rambo players they just want to like you know they don't really want to play vanguard but they want to collect the collector's pieces of their favorite characters from the game so i think that's pretty cool like if you don't know what token rambo is it's basically like a computer game that was pretty popular in japan at some point and it, i think it has a global release coming sometime this year if i'm not mistaken they also showed the back of the packaging of the actual trial deck at one point which had the over trigger on it which we know is being revealed next week so that's pretty cool and then of course this week was just collabs galore because they also showed us the monster strike details so monster strike if you don't know is a really popular gacha game in japan i think it had an english release at one point but got shut down i think it also has an anime but it's basically like i don't know it's like um it's not really pinball, but it's kind of like a pinball slash like billiards that you play, but like with anime waifus and stuff or just like marbles in a way. But it's a really popular gacha game in Japan and it does collabs with literally everything. Like I remember there's a YouTuber I watch who really likes it. So he often like pulls like he posts videos on his second channel, like pulling gacha for it. And I remember they had like a Yu-Gi-Oh collab. They had a good Enlagan collab, Promare collab, Attack and Titan collab, Persona collab. Like they collab with basically everything, which is pretty insane. I think they even collabed with that YouTuber at one point, which is, you know, pretty cool to see in a gacha game. So I wouldn't be surprised if like a Vanguard Overdress collab happens in Monster Strike. I'll definitely try out the game if that happens, or I might even do like a, a live stream of just trying out Monster Strike at some point, you know, to see what the game is all about. Because if it does have a collab, I'd want to like save up gems and stuff to be able to pull on it. But honestly, I don't really expect these products to come to English because we've seen that like Vanguard has exclusives in all the different languages, right? Thai Vanguard has its own exclusives, Korean Vanguard has its own exclusives, and of course, like, English Vanguard 2 has exclusives like Revival Collections, those are our exclusives. You know, sure, we don't have an Apex Legends collab exclusive in English, but, you know, it's still, we have some exclusives, and I think it's fine for Japan to have some like this too, because honestly, like, from Bushiroad's perspective, I don't think this would sell. Like, how many of y'all in the comments actually play Monster Strike? And if you do, tell me about it, right? If you do play Monster Strike, I want to hear about it. Like, tell me what it's, what's cool about it, right? Because I just don't see this being popular even though the arts are really cool so they showed there's two different trial decks coming out for it which do look pretty nice so they have one which is this one i don't know any names of these units or anything but they have this one which is apparently a really popular unit in the actual like game and it's like super busted and stuff and then they have the second one which looks really cool to me i like this like i don't know like goth goat lady i don't really know what to call her she looks like very like possessed and stuff but she looks cool so i'll probably pick up these trial decks because they look nice and they're just a cool thing to have they have an exclusive rarity as well which is called like um msr so i think it's like monster strike rare where they basically look like you know monster strike cards so like when you pull them from the gacha and they have like the name on top of the card instead of at the bottom so it's pretty cool looking honestly you know they they look quite nice so i think the fire one is called excalibur so that's the one on the first trial deck and then this yellow one is called uriel so it's pretty cool and i think the one at the very bottom the one with like her like leg sticking out i think she had a collab with Yu-Gi-Oh at one point too because i remember there being a Yu-Gi-Oh promo card with monster strike at one point which is pretty cool so the booster set in the trial decks i think come out on the 23rd of july so in just a couple damn saying in just a couple of months is pretty crazy i guess in three months and it's pretty wild to see that there's 71 cards in this and then 81 parallels that means some of the parallels are either like different types of parallels or like just parallels from the trial deck the nice thing about these trial decks for the collabs is that they have their own um power counters so the, the token rambo one has these nice pink ones which is really really nice actually i'm picking up a few of those trial decks just because i want to have the markers and then the trial decks for the monster strike collab come with these red ones i think they come with two power counters each which is really cool so if you buy both 
of them, you get four. So just for those like acrylic power counters, honestly, I'm already digging this product a lot. But here you can see like how these like rarities look like. So on the left, you see what the normal rarity looks like. And then on the right is the Monsto Monstorea. So Monsto is like the shortened version of Monster Strike. So it's Mon is like monster and then Suto is like strike. So like, like that's just like Monsto is like the shortened version of the game's name. So I guess it's pretty cool. They also show that this deck will function around a set order called Gacharidora, which is like if you ever watch a gacha pulling video of Monster Strike, that's like that's the dragon that you like pull the gacha from like he spits out the gacha for you and so apparently the gimmick will be that you can pull gacha with the deck like the deck is literally like gacha so will this be like gacha range in, in duel masters that's kind of what i'm expecting at this point but we're gonna find out what actually does next week so look forward to that but yeah i think that's all the news this video went on for longer than i expected because there really wasn't that much to talk about this week but i guess somehow there's a lot of discussion to be had i'm personally still gonna pick up some of these like you know collab sets because we don't know if slash when they'll come in English so just to have them I guess and to open them I do want to pick them up you know as a sort of like collectible almost but yeah I think it's overall pretty cool and just nice to see because you know I think that these collabs are a way for Bushiro to attract players from other games and just like from mobile games in particular right mobile games are some of the biggest like platforms of you know gaming in general in Japan because you can play them on the go while you're commuting and stuff so appealing to that audience is really really smart of Bushiro because it can reach new players that will get into the card game but yeah that's basically all that I really wanted to talk about I think we sort of went through everything and so there'll be a lot more to talk about next week I think as we'll wrap up all the festival collection cards I think plus we'll get more token Rambo stuff and monster strike stuff next week I think so yeah but of course a lot of us are just like excitedly playing with the dbt01 stuff so I guess the news might not be as attractive but at least the stuff we have to play with right now is definitely very hype also shout outs to Modi P for talking about the English community at the start of the stream this week you know he talked about like the English release coming out next week and like how there's different like deck building ideas between Japan and like outside of Japan so definitely really cool to see us acknowledged all the time like that just honestly what an amazing producer we have but yeah that's all I really want to talk about today thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>